Hello everyone, welcome back to Spar and Brawl. So I saw this survey by Pew Research Center and it kind of caught my attention. So it's about what Americans prioritize, what issue they find to be most important. And I want to kind of link it to this whole forced to vote and Medicare for all debate because there is one part I was talking to you, Sam, before that I don't quite agree with um, <clears throat> Bree's take and that's about how important people um believe that Medicare for all or cheaper healthcare is right now. So let's just watch this little clip from her debate with Sam Sater. It's a very short one. And then uh, let's get to this survey. So Michael Lighty came on and what he argued was that we have a 20 year ish so window to Medicare for all, which involves state by state Medicare for all, principally uh, starting with California, and that he believes that when Gavin Newsom makes a presidential bid, he is basically going to ride the wave of Medicare for all in California to the White House and make that a principal issue. Now, hmm. reasonable minds can disagree on that. I personally don't find that to be an adequate plan, largely because it misses the opportunity that this historical moment of enormous cataclysmic healthcare failure in the United States of America in the middle of a global pandemic, which is likely to last two years, it misses the opportunity to leverage that to create the kind of political pressure on our elected officials so that it is toxic for someone like Joe Biden to say he would veto Medicare for all in the middle of a pandemic. It is toxic for only 118 Democrats to be co-signers of a bill when 88 percent of Democratic voters and a majority of Americans support Medicare for all. Right now we have poll numbers, but we, it is not politically toxic to oppose Medicare for all because we have no one in the media institutions or in the political institutions who are willing to point out why it is that our elected rep officials don't support this popular policy. The reason being rank corruption and being bought out by the pharmaceutical and healthcare industry. And that is an argument, it is very difficult to foreground, but which in this moment, in this historical moment, I think we should be fighting like the Dickens to put front and center. But do you believe will... when the pandemic ends, yeah. that the logic for eliminating for-profit health insurance will also end? No, because the fight for Medicare for all obviously began before the pandemic. Yeah. It picked up momentum before the pandemic. It started pulling well before the pandemic. Shouldn't the fight still exist after the pandemic? And okay, now that we watch this clip, and I actually really like Virgil's question at the end, and I pretty much agree with I think what he's trying to say. But oh yeah, before I forget, at the end of this video, we're gonna have a lot of fun with this tweet by Anna Kasparian and the responses that she's received. But we'll save that for the end. But okay, Sam, before we start looking at these, at the survey, is there anything about those clip, about the clip that we watched, anything on your mind, or should we get into the survey and then discuss it? No, no, I, I, let's get into the survey, okay. I think. Yeah. So this survey, just so everybody know, it's a Pew Research Center survey. It was conducted between the 8th and the 12th of January. It only surveyed 5,360 Americans, but they are members of the nationally representative American Trend Panel. Okay, so that's who they serve it. Let's get going with the first one. So the first one is just asks Americans what they believe should be top priority for the president and Congress to address this year. So it start off with strengthening the economy, dealing with coronavirus outbreak, improving job situation after that, then there's defending against terrorism. I was surprised this was still this high. Then there's improving political system, which is quite, I don't know, vague, I found. And then it was reducing healthcare costs. So they didn't ask about Medicare exactly. So Sam, tell me, do you think if it's a bit unfair if I'm using this survey to say that, you see, Brie isn't totally right that Americans are making this coronavirus Medicare association in their head and even though most Americans want uh, wants Medicare for all according to some other polls maybe it isn't their top top priority what do you make of that Sam? <clears throat> to be honest I, I don't think she would disagree with you that uh, it's not people's top priority I think what she's trying to say is that the representatives who are who were at least elected on a platform to be uh, to be quite on the left, you know, uh, and uh, be very pro-Medicare for all and stuff, they are not willing to make the issue 
um, more toxic or more uh, more of a concern for people. For example, the representatives, that's a comparison that is made by a lot of people, that the Tea Party people used to be very aggressive and both their grassroots activists and their representatives in the Congress, and they really made life hard for, you know, if you start really banging on about the issue, then it will become a more serious issue for the people. And to be honest, I, um, I mean, that's a more more fundamental problem, but I think, yeah, the, I mean, <clears throat> it's very vague, some of the terms used in this research for for example strengthening the economy uh, you could argue that if you have a healthcare system that is not tied to employment does in a way a strengthen economy because it avoids ba- individual bankruptcies uh, when people are out of jobs or some something like that so uh, you know the, the, I, I think she's right that if some people have started banging on about it uh, that would become a major concern for people, especially during a pandemic. But uh, if they don't bang on about it, I think you're right. Uh, automatic, it's it's not a automatically the highest priority or the highest concern for everyone if nobody's talking about it. Yeah, I mean, I kind, I mean, I also understood her saying it that way, and that part I agree. But I feel like she was also kind of saying that. No, right now this issue is more important than ever. So therefore, the force to vote should have asked for Medicare for all and not for a different kind of ask because this is like the most important thing right now in people's mind. And that's the part where I'm not too sure if that's the case. And if there, so there's nothing because so she argues that there's like a historic opportunity right now because this is on people's mind and kind of like. Virgil Texas asked them, but you know, this was a huge issue actually kind of before the pandemic. So I just don't see this having changed it, changed it that much. So it's not necessarily like you didn't have to ask for this, although it's very important. I don't think the moment, at least the way the narrative is in the press right now and in people's minds, that's the part I kind of disagreed with her. I don't know. I, I mean, I'm somewhat relaxed about the whole thing, generally speaking, but I think a lot of people are being affected directly by Corona. And if somebody focused on that, I do think in this moment you could get, a, you know, it's like everybody was going on about the financial systems before 2008. But when something like that happens, it gives them, you know, it gives more people uh, motivation to uh, focus on something so I think you it could happen I'm not saying it would or it you know uh, but there needs to be a momentum from above I think f- for it to happen first but you you're right though the Medicare for all thingy uh, like this was an issue in 2016 where Bernie was running it was an issue then years before the pandemic yeah no definitely and then Okay, and and you're right about the terms and this survey. I mean, you know, I don't love this survey, and I'm not saying that you know this survey proves that Americans don't want Medicare for all or cheaper healthcare because they didn't even ask for Medicare for all; they just asked reduce um, healthcare costs. But I, I want to move on to the next. I'm going to move on to the next survey, to the next graph. I guess I don't know if, unless mm. you have anything else no. to comment about here. But actually, in the beginning of that video that I showed you. I think doesn't that make a lot of sense in a in a federal in a country like the US which has you know each state has a lot of power would it not make sense if there is kind of like a medicare rolled out state per state would that not be more feasible it just doesn't sound like um sounds like a decent idea really sounds well i mean it 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 sounds like a decent idea for the next generation, though. It's going to yeah. take 20 years, you know. So, but even Obamacare it, kind of ro- was Obamacare. Did it cover all the states immediately or was it like state by state? I think it was. Uh, no, that was a federal plan. That was a federal was, plan. It was a plan that was already in practice in uh, states that were run by Republican governors, including mm-hmm. Mitt Romney. Yeah. So that was a, you know, that was a Republican. I think Obamacare came out of a Heritage Foundation, basically recommendations. Yeah. So, no, I, I mean, look, 
e- even if it's done state by state, if it's done very fast in a year or yeah. so, of course, what's you know that sounds great too. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I yeah I, I don't think it, I I think there needs for 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 example a lot of more progressive states in America do have more uh, progressive uh, health systems internally within a state. So I think yeah, the problem is some of the states that uh, will not, uh, you know, uh, they, they they won't do this, basically. So there needs to be a federal push and a federal yeah. mandate for that. So, yeah. And I think another thing that goes against it, usually for healthcare and even insurance for these kind of things, everybody needs to kind of be involved. And that's how that's how it works. So although you could perhaps do it state by state, but that's why you can have a little bit of, you know, public health care and a little bit of private it doesn't work you know it's like insurance and healthcare everybody needs to pay into it for it to <clears throat> for it to really work so perhaps state by state it wouldn't even be um, really feasible uh, yeah i don't know maybe uh, for some yeah. smaller states or something i'm just guessing okay mm-hmm. now it gets more fun so the survey gets more fun they start looking at some partisan gaps so the second uh, one is pretty much on you know what if their person is leaning republican or if they're leaning democrat so here it gets funny, addressing issues around race, big gap between, I mean, big gap between Democrats and Republicans, climate change, an even bigger gap. I don't know, do you see any particular one that no, uh, c- c- uh, caught your attention? Climate change is a smaller gap, no? Minus no, I think it's almost the same. It's minus 45 and the race is minus 48. It's interesting that the least... Wait, are you on the second graph? Uh, no, first one, I think. No, no, the first one that is Republican and uh, de- Democratic, the addressing issues around race. Yeah, yeah, so 24 and 72. Oh, yeah, and dealing climate change is 14. Minus 14. Oh, you're looking, sorry, you're looking already at the differences, so not even doing it in your head. <laughs> yeah, you're right, the no, gap is a uh, bit less. <laughs> My math no, let me down there. Very interestingly, there is no gap on immigration, dealing with immigration. But yeah. that's my point, though. It says dealing with immigration. I'm sure Republicans have a completely different definition of dealing than Democrats when it comes <laughs> to so immigration. That's so true. Hey, that's so, so true. You know, <clears throat> yeah, we are all for dealing with immigration. Yeah. I'm for dealing with a gun. Uh, no, the <laughs> terms understand? and the way it, it's a bit disappointing, kind of the, the the terms and the lack of nuance, mm. especially since it was like a ranking thing. But I then mean, let's. This, this may have been based on a like a questionnaire that was given to yeah. them, so it may have not. Been, I think but... they they probably rated them or something from like out of ten. Mm. Or something like that. But yeah, what else? Anything else that is oh, defending terrorism? It's, I mean, I guess it will always be there. The budget. I, I love uh, there is a section about uh, 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 what was it? Uh, let me. There is little difference there as well. Uh, um. Securing social security, which has always been like seems to be a bipartisan issue, and everybody's learned that to not mess with yeah. that too much. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, that's yeah. okay. Reducing crime, mm, interesting, very interesting. That yeah, uh, securing social security, dealing with immigration, and improving political system. These mm-hmm. three seem to have <laughs> the least. I think securing social security is really the most like um it's the most proper one here because there's no because the way it's framed i don't think people Mm. misunderstand but yeah dealing with immigration can literally mean two different things you're so right there yeah or reducing the budget deficit also i don't know yeah Yeah, Uh, let's see what's the if you want we can move on to the third one let's see what the third one has in store okay so this one between Uh, black mm -hmm. hispanic and white adults so any differences Mm -hmm. Again, we see some pretty big issue differences around race. Not surprised. Does it get tighter anywhere? Mm. Coronavirus is very high among black people. It's quite interesting. See, when it gets very specific, I think they're closer. Improving transportation, mm-hmm. they are a bit closer. Yeah. It seems. I mean, I can't tell the difference is not mentioned here, so I can't yeah. be sure. But, but it's not much. Issues that are very specific. 
Yeah. And I mean, strengthening economy here, they're literally almost the same. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, who would say no to that? I, I mean, yeah. And I mean, why? It's a big priority. It's military, a man. Military is interesting. But in black yeah, and how, white people, eighteen percent different. Between black and white populations, strengthening military. It's kind of in the middle. Ah, uh, yeah. Well, it's interesting that yeah, black and Hispanics are more for strengthening yeah. than white people. Interesting. <clears throat> yeah. But uh, uh, terrorism, I white and Hispanic. Wow, such a big gap in terrorism too. Hmm. It's a bit interesting. Like, oh, yeah. white and Hispanics are very similar, but black. Black. In, it's interesting that in issues surrounding security and stuff, it seems the black community is somewhat more conservative than the yeah. white. Drug addiction, the same, uh, I think. Yeah. Okay, interesting. And, uh, but it's a very interesting report. Let's move on to the next one. <clears throat> so this one, okay, this one between men and women, the differences. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. Here they range, they're not that much. The highest difference is 15 around issue, around race issue, criminal justice, reducing healthcare. Women um, prioritize it more, reducing healthcare costs. Sorry, <laughs> not reducing mm -hmm. healthcare. But then, yeah, not not too different. Not uh, not not yeah, too many differences. Yeah. It seems always around. Five point difference yeah. on average. Except, I guess the race, the race one is the highest difference. Criminal justice, race, yeah, criminal justice and healthcare. I suppose. Yeah, that's interesting. Mm. The healthcare one is interesting and improving education too. Mm -hmm. well, <laughs> reducing it's budget. Yeah. Improving um, healthcare. It is. It is in a study. So sometimes mentioned that. Uh, females use the healthcare system more often, mm -hmm. and this seems to be more concern for women. And then you have tr improving transportation, point. which is more of a concern for men. And I mean, uh, traditionally, because men tend to go out to work mm -hmm. and stuff, uh, men use it clearly. See, it, these this research shows that people are just bunch of self interest. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Everybody's just, oh, what am I using? That's important. Well, what yeah. affects me personally? In the My number one priority. priority is a new skate park. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which one of these, uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't see skate park. Can I just write this somewhere again? <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm okay. making a huge generalization yeah. right away, but yeah. No, it, it but I mean, everybody, that's how it works. Mind. Hope everybody kind of needs yeah. to I, look I after bet, themselves without trumping over other people's uh, needs. Yeah, yeah I, I bet uh, if they had ch included children, improving education would have been like the highest concern <laughs> for children. And then all the other corona, I think. <laughs> Though, or maybe the lowest, it depends. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Inter very interesting. Very yeah. Interesting. I think there's one more. Okay, now it's between. Uh -huh, I like this one. Now it's children. <laughs> yeah. Okay, now it's actually between yeah age groups. So I have one problem with the age group. I don't love the 18. I don't love the 30 to 49. I wish they would have divided it one more time. I wish they had 30 to 39 and then 40 to 49 because that's like an important age group. And they put the two together. Whereas 18 to 29... Eh, anyway, but it's good. Younger it's people good. aren't that much into the military. Perhaps a bit less hawkish. Mm -hmm. I like that. Big differences. I mean, in social security, terrorism is almost double when you go to the 77 and above. Where else do I see big differences? Strengthening the economy. Surprisingly, wow, 18 to 29-year-olds prioritizes much less than everybody else. I mean, not. I suppose they don't... Yeah, that, and I don't like this category at all. Yeah, right, this first category is kind of... But you see, yeah, improving education is... Uh, yeah, ex the elder people care about yeah. it far less so <laughs> than younger people. But and, no, it's still but, cool. No, they care a little bit more. No, I think... Improving yellow... education. Oh, you're right, the oh, colors change. The, oh my God, you're old, so old, right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're so absolutely right. Although you're right, the the high uh, 
30 to 49 year olds have the highest concern it seems Dealing but then what else where are they older are they? people have the highest concern mm. for immigration look at our uh, look at the healthcare costs by the way it's kind of closer not mm-hmm. that big not a big Very difference cri- addressing criminal justice system oh i suppose when it says addressing criminal justice system it means from a racial perspective for example making it less uh, discriminatory because i was surprised that older people had such a low concern yeah but- yeah, okay, makes sense. Dealing with global trade, everybody is very similar, it seems. Where is that? Dealing with global trade. Oh, yeah, it's big. yeah. Mm-hmm. Not a big priority. Climate change also, it's under the 50. I mean, so what, what? what's the most important things out there that you see for some people? Strengthening economy, of course, is leading everything. And uh, then coronavirus, coronavirus is up there. Mm. Then really improving political system, I feel, and securing social security come Re- after reducing that. Reducing healthcare costs. Yeah. Or oh, and job situation for everybody. Job situation. For everybody above the thirty category. Mm. They should have broken that down one more time. I I I think they should have mentioned the differences in every table because <laughs> yeah. it's very hard to read these tables. But yeah, anyway. Okay, I think there was one more. Yeah, there's another one. Yeah, so this one is by education. So educational gaps. So looking at that, so if post grad, college grad, um, some college or less. Oh, post grads, interesting. They have de- like drug addiction. They they really don't care about. None none of the groups particularly care about drug addiction. That's positive. <laughs> Well, I mean, I wonder how yeah, representative the sample is. <laughs> Who should it include for them to care? Mm, good point. I'm trying to look at what's the most important issues. Dealing with Corona, it seems to be the most yeah. important for everybody. For people Every who have some college, people with some college after strengthening the economy, coronavirus, everything drops, then there's terrorism. Ter- mm. Terrorism maintains steady, a very <laughs> steady presence <laughs> over the years. You know, you have, it's like I'm yeah, making yeah, a yeah. comeback. 2022, <laughs> post COVID, <laughs> number one priority in media, regardless of anything else. The least amount of differences in improving education, uh, improving transportation, yeah. and uh, improving. In dealing with immigration, interesting. Again, I have a feeling each group has a different meaning of dealing with immigration. But yeah, very interesting though. Yeah, no, it was a f- it was a fun little survey. They broke it down mm-hmm. some some issues, of course. But interesting. I mean, the economy is always the thing which everybody knows. You know, improving our material well-being is always number one priority so i guess not too surprising there mm-hmm. but well, yeah, yeah okay sam okay so yeah. let's move on to the second part of the video which gets a bit more fun so have you heard about this whole thing about ryan Grimm deleting his tweet because he said that the nursing unions hadn't been approached by the force to vote people, but that doesn't seem to be the case. And then, yeah, so I'm going to put this video on right now, which is by Fran from, she's on TYT, she's on a lot of places. And pretty much the, her tweet says, so let's start off with this. So she, she has, this is the tweet by Ryan Grimm that was deleted. And it says that the nurses union lead organizer said that nobody from forced to vote ever reached out to them about their idea for the floor and blah, blah. And she's like, you know, She's saying, well, you see, this hadn't happened. And my first, um, before even finding out that this wasn't the case and it had been retracted, was that, so what? I don't find that surprising. I mean, Brianna herself in her video said that, you know, she comes from the communication aspect. She doesn't do grassroots activism. Jimmy Dore never said, let's organize that. They just suggested this idea kind of which turned into this whole debate and back and forth. So they never actually claim that they're going to be organizing on the ground for these kind of things. So even if that was true, I'm like, okay, it shows it shows the weaknesses of the strategy, of course, for sure. 
But these folks never claimed that they're also going to be, you know, leading the organization on the ground. Sure. Yes. I, I mean, of course, that's the first and uh, first point that they didn't. I mean, they came up with the idea. They didn't. Yeah. Although you could say if you're pushing for an idea, well, do it yourself if you think it's such a good idea. And it seems, I mean, I thought that I hadn't heard about this tweet until you brought it to my attention, to be honest. And I am kind of can't believe it because, I mean. Uh, yeah, you told I me guess, you don't believe it. What did you mean by that? Oh, oh uh, hmm. because I like Ryan Grimm to me seems like the most. Uh, upstanding uh, yeah. like he looks like a Greek citizen of some kind but <clears throat> you know like in terms of he knows the like how you should behave as a citizen and all that. so uh, if he has re- retracted retracted it though it I guess it makes sense like he made a mistake and yeah. then he took it back but uh, well get into the details tell everybody and then I'll yeah, yeah well I mean I, I thought you could, but yeah, no, but I uh, don't know. I, I tried to look more into it and it wasn't mm. it doesn't say anywhere that it was retracted or how he got it um, wrong or anything. And then, yeah, we'll get into more of the reaction. But based on this, this is all the information I have. So he definitely interviewed the person, but then he decided, I guess he misheard, misunderstood the person. All right. OK, well, yeah, uh, yeah that was very disappointing to yeah. see because I thought anyway, I really quite liked Ryan Grimm compared to it anyway. But uh so yeah, it stinks. I mean, I mean you no. Know, tell tell the people what's the, I mean, there. But what? Well, well, he apparently uh, now the nurses union, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. they're saying now that yes, they have been contacted by Brianna Joy Gray. Yeah, correct. It, exactly. Now, and to what so extent Ryan and Green what I don't know. What was wrong? He deleted his tweet. But somebody else, yeah. I mean, you can tell us more. <laughs> yeah, so that's where we're going to get into the fun part uh, about Anna Kasparian, who, who still seems to be running with this, or maybe she stopped Is now. This, but yeah. By the way, I, I didn't look at the date of tweets. Was this from last few days? Maybe it was yeah, from yeah. a week. No, no, oh. no. So first of all, the one I'm reading, I took all these screenshots um, Two, on yeah, Thursday. Yeah. Two, so the yeah. first one, this is how I found out because I went on Ryan Grimm's thing to f- look for this tweet and I couldn't find it. I just assumed it was somewhere. But someone on Twitter, the progressive Michigander had written that Ryan Grimm has retracted this. And yeah, and then it's like Anna continues to use Grimm's deleted tweet to slander both Brie and National Nurses United. So I don't know if Anna is still going on now that she knows. But anyway, she really, I mean, her tweet, regardless of this, if it was wrong or right, her tweet is absolutely terrible. I mean, the way she's talking about Brie here, I mean, he, Brianna, sorry, I mean, is really, I was, I was shocked. So she wrote that if I had to choose between believing the nurses union or a woman, I mean, both the way she's talking about Jimmy Dore and, and her, her or a woman who provided cover for a guy who's now promoting the idea of aligning with the Boogaloo boys. Someone has tell me what that is one day anyway. I'll go with the nurses until there's any evidence otherwise. So, I mean, I'm like, who? You mean the woman who oh, communicated oh, and, and you, for Bernie Sanders? Who, who are you referring to? Who's this guy, Bernie Sanders? And who's the woman? I mean, no, no, and you forgot to mention the ending, which is a thanks. Oh, yeah. It's a very, yeah, very mm, no, interesting. I mean, this tweet was well I mean, borderline you know, disgusting are, really i mean the I way mean, i mean i really didn't like the way he mentioned her the way she mentions her oh i mean i wouldn't i don't know it, it, she's a anyway but i would have if if i was more active on twitter i may have commented that you know there are further evidence now yeah. and it seems that uh, that woman was right <laughs> so you shouldn't have gone with the nurse or not nurses, but that yeah. person who was interviewed, but Ryan Grimm. But even so, that, yeah. I mean, the category, I mean, um, characterizing her as the woman who provided cover for a guy. I mean, uh, what do you... I, I'm guessing she's referring to Jimmy Dore. And yeah, I hope it's not Bernie. Not mistaken, <laughs> are sort of a right wing kind of like Proud Boys type. I'm not sure. I don't yeah. know anything about them. So all I'm saying right now is a. A speculation. And I've I heard about this, this Boogala Boys thing. I didn't watch the video, but apparently Jimmy had, you know, some kind of normal working class kind of person who was associated with this. And apparently he didn't say the craziest stuff. But anyway, yeah, I don't even know 
um, who the Boogaloo Boys are. We need to find out who the Boogaloo Boys are and what Boutique Left. I think I have a slight suspicion oh, of what left, Boutique know, Left is. But that's I new, know. right? I only heard it for the first time like, no, but, a few weeks yeah, ago. I've heard, I've heard that about, I've heard that in the religious context, to be honest, before mm-hmm. that they used to say these are boutique Catholics or something, okay. that they're only Catholic. Yeah. Like, you know, boutiques Muslims that are, yeah. they do anything on Islamic every other month of the year, but Ramadan mm-hmm. suddenly Islam re But since when is it cool to be a leftist? Why would anybody be <laughs> a no, boutique well, left? It, no, but within, or... Basically, it doesn't mean it's cool. It means that they're they like to talk about it, but they don't want to do anything about it. Yeah, okay, so I mean they're like they're fake. That was my understanding. Well, yeah, basically they they're all oh, show, so but they they don't walk people. the talk. They're like a boutique. Exactly, yeah. exactly. We don't walk the talk. Yeah. That's that's perfect. Yeah. Well, that's funny. Okay, let's have fun. So, okay, the comments. These are the well, responses to Anna Kasparian's uh, tweet. And honestly, I didn't really cherry pick them. I kind of went in order at first, and then I looked for the ones that had the most likes and stuff. So someone oh. starts with WTF, put that aside. I really like this one. It's so simple. He says, um, Jane Bull Koch said, give it a rest already. You hate Thor. We got it. <laughs> See, that's so me. That's so me. I would have said the same thing. Then there's the picture of her, of course, with um, what's the lady's name? Ab- 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 Abigail... Ah, fuck. Abigail. Ma- Madeline Albright. Yes. Madeline, Madeline Albright. And people like this, you. Yeah. So she's been uh, getting secretary. a lot of shit. Yeah. She, so. she, was, she was involved in uh, bombing of uh, Sudanese uh, uh, pharmacy factory and a lot of other sanctions. Sanctions that basically killed uh, Iraqi children, deprived them of um, cancer treatment pills. Look, again, I'm not saying that Anna Kasparian shouldn't interview these people or it's, uh, you know, of course I would be happy or, uh, you know, everybody would be happy for opportunity to interview somebody this famous or powerful. But if you take a picture with these people like that and this stuff, you shouldn't be so negative towards some other people that are actually agree with you on 99% of issues and have a a slight disagreement and under uh, yeah it's just yeah i mean if you were such a cherry picker in your friends you wouldn't pick yeah uh, madeline arbright for sure no 100 percent right the issue isn't that she just did the interview it's a this photo and apparently she starts off with something like it's an honor or something along those lines i might be mistaken but she yeah, starts but off you, the kind of I mean, you get caught up in the moment. Yeah, so, yeah, mean, yeah. That's the thing too. Yeah. That's why it's, this it's, is not the I worst mean, thing hope, here. Yeah. I hope one day I I miss, see Obama and I'll be as critical to him as I am <laughs> uh, right now when I don't see him. But you know, in reality, there is a very good chance I'll be, you know, like, oh, hello, yeah. Mr. Obama, I love you. You know, <laughs> like people get caught up, so yeah. I, I don't judge her too much. But if you're if you do well. Uh, take pictures with her why are you so harsh on people who were your colleagues and your friends very uh, not long ago yeah exactly even if jimmy is the worst person in the world he doesn't have that much power (laughs) to be honest yeah Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) okay so the next tweet isn't that much fun but it's from a nurse apparently and she just says that she's active at the state level and everything and what she did by maligning forced to vote as some ill-conceived strategy and Jimmy Dore who is advocating for it deeply harmed the push towards it. But okay. So the next one. Uh, what you did by maligning? So this I, I nurse... don't understand. So... She's in support of Anna or opposed to her? No, she opposes Anna. She's saying that, you know, I'm active on the ground and the way you attacked them... It didn't help. It didn't help with getting Medicare for all. But then at the end, she says, and Jimmy Dore, who was advocating for yeah. Oh, what okay. you did by my line. Yeah. 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 I, okay. I didn't this get, tweet is sorry, a bit I hard. Didn't get where the yeah. pause is. <laughs> Let's get to the short, sweeter ones <laughs> that we understand yeah, better. Yeah, the one. next yeah. one, you've become a villain in the story of the left, Anna. Now here, the next one, Brianna Gray is infinitely more trustworthy than Anna Kasparian. Yeah, that's the thing. Her reputation uh, like is so much better more too. Oh, Dr. Peace Love. <laughs> Doctor, and the picture is Dr. Strange Love from yeah. the movie. And yeah, yeah. That's, a, that's a good one. I mean, Brianna right now is really like beloved in the progressive world. And 
Anna's the complete opposite. So even if she was right, she wasn't going to have too much of a chance in this battle. Sad. Yeah, I mean, I hope people don't get personal about anything. Yeah. But yeah, uh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Basically. Now, yeah. once again, somebody says that this is super low blow. As a fan, this is very disappointing. Mm. Oh, someone wrote, come on, Jimmy wants to align with all far-right extremists and Bree's a good debater. She even defeats herself in the debate. Oh, <laughs> I kept I, this one because the last part was funny, but yeah, I don't know what this person's on about. Now, here is the real thing. So this person got 65 replies, 166 retweet, and nearly 3,000 likes. Con- and the 2K right now said, constantly smearing people by association is really, really getting old argue the merits for once and then there's that tweet i'll show it again where anna says i agree with jimmy Dore's idea strategy and everything pretty much except i don't like him <laughs> which is really the, the uh, saddest yeah. one i like to buy uh, yeah anyways yeah it's, and it's, it's I think that was pretty much all we had then again we have then you had, uh, yeah Another one by Dr. Peace Love, and this one, this one, I love it because it's so like on the on the uh, memes and stuff that you see on Instagram. So it says no one, two dots. Of course, there's nothing. And then, but Anna Kasparian, Brianna is the devil. <laughs> You've seen these, right? It's like a type of I don't know if you come across it yeah. type of humor. <laughs> but yeah, that was a little bit of fun. I feel like we're having fun once a week these days along with our more serious issues and it's not to make fun of medicare for all or forced to vote i mean that issue is very serious but 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 kind of the extension of it i'm i'm interested in the the i I thought you're gonna read this one the tweet that which one did i uh, skip one person progressive michigander uh, yeah no we read this one in the beginning but go again again yeah go ahead no 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 but then there is a reply that says seriously this is libel Bree should oh, consider yeah. legal action. I wonder if that's true. Yeah, I didn't include that. A, as if any of the viewers are a bit of expert on legal stuff, they could tell us if, because I don't know if he interviews. I, I doubt. In the US, yeah. I doubt. In the US, I doubt. Apparently, in the UK, you can get into trouble um, for things like this much more easily. If someone uh, has the money and the power to bring you, uh, to bring the attention to you. I mean, I just remember this author was talking about his book and how he got the American version approved much more quickly. But for the British version, he was thinking of taking out some stories and whatnot because of the libel laws. Well, and, li- yeah, yeah, that's the thing. Libel and defamation is far more serious in Europe. Yeah. <clears throat> but I wonder if, I mean, I doubt there's going to be mm. any legal action taken or anything. And to be honest, it seems that, I I mean, I, I was on the side of the force the vote st- completely but at this it's over now yeah. and i i just don't understand why now that it's over and they uh, aoc was kicked out of that committee that she was supposed to chair why they still think that if they were more aggressive it would have been worse than now so well let's hope in the future um situations they are slightly more aggressive yep definitely okay i think this was it uh, for this video any final thoughts uh, no, but oh, uh, there was an interview that's mentioning Anna. There was a great interview with Jeremy Corbyn by mm-hmm, uh, yeah. Jacobin by uh, Anna Kasparian and uh, Nino, if I'm not mispronouncing it. And uh, yeah, I really, uh, I think she's m- far more mainstream than. I don't know though. Sometimes she's very lefty in her policies, but yeah. again, you could see that when she sees somebody like Jeremy Corbyn or Madeleine Albright, she does tend to be very sweet and she's attracted to power. I think somewhat. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So you watched the interview, the whole thing? Oh yeah, yeah, mm. yeah, okay. yeah. Though. I think ninety percent of it. It was pretty good. It was very interesting. Okay. Very nice. Okay, all right. Thank you, everyone, for watching this video. If you liked it, please make sure to like and subscribe, and we'll see you in our next video. Thank you.